What's going on everybody? This is Justin with me, myself, and Dyson. This is your first time on the channel. Welcome. We do video playthroughs of solo board games, how to play videos, and other board game related content. If you haven't already, think about hitting that subscribe button and definitely hit that like button so that we can share these videos around and share the love of board games and solo board gaming to those who may not know about it. Today we're playing a unique solo only game with hidden movement and deduction, Black Sonata. We're tracking down the dark lady, hopefully, that Shakespeare speaks so mysteriously about in his sonnets. So what win I if I gain the things I seek? Let's get down to the table and play Black Sonata. Welcome down to the table, everyone, where we have everything laid out for a game of Black Sonata. There's a few things we have left to do for setup, and setup is one of the interesting parts of this to figure out how this works. The first thing we need to do is we have our player pawn here. We have all these locations on the board, and before we do anything else, we need to decide where we're going to start. I think I'm going to start over here in uh, Clerkenwell. And I may not pronounce all of these exactly right, but I'm gonna do my best. The next thing we need to do is we have our Dark Lady cards. These are gonna be uh, sort of clue style. This is gonna decide where she is. So there are different suits of cards and we're playing standard difficulty, so I have all of them mixed in. And I'm just going to uh, cut the deck and that one is gonna be the one we get. So it's going to be uh, the rose. So the next thing we need to do, we took that underneath like so. And the next thing we need to do is go through and there are two of each suit. So we need to find the other rose card, there it is. And we need to put that up there and then we'll shuffle these up and put the dark lady card on top so we can't see what suit's coming up. So I'm just gonna close my eyes and put this on top. Okay, like so. There we go. We have our track markers. Uh, some people like to use these, some people don't, but I think it's great for filming purposes. We have our fog cards. These are all shuffled up and we don't look at these. We just have a, a draw pile for those. We have all of our location cards. These are face up and we just have those in a pile. We actually put those on top of here because after we visit each location, we can get the other rose card. And that's vital for trying to figure out where the dark lady is and who she is. Not where she is, but who she is. The next thing we need to do, this is the deck that uh, does the hidden movement of the dark lady. And so you pick one of the four letters. Actually, there's uh, four letters at the bottom too. That's for harder difficulty. Uh, but you put them in alphabetic order. So I've chosen the third letter over and I've placed them A, B, C, D, E, all the way through Z. And any that have a dash like so in the third spot are removed from the game. So we keep those in that order and we'll take them and we need to grab this card right here. This is the timer card of how many times we can go through the deck. If we uh, get to zero, then we lose automatically. We're gonna start, there's a three on here, but we're gonna start standard difficulty is a two. So we're gonna take that we cut the deck randomly, there we go, put this at the bottom, and that just means that she starts at a random place, uh, not where A is, but it's still in that same order. So we look at the back of the card, and that is where she is going to start. So we look for that symbol, the boat symbol. Uh, so Riverside, there's one here, and there's one here, and there's one at London Bridge. So she's starting somewhere in that area. And that's it for setup. So what we do is very, very simple. We flip the next card to see where she's gone, uh, possibly, and we're trying to track her down. And then we're trying to find the three symbols. We have uh, one of each symbol here. There are three symbols on the side of the card, and we're using the other cards to deduce what that symbol is so we can figure out who the dark lady is that Shakespeare writes about. So we'll start here, let's go. She's going to move and she always moves in standard difficulty one space. 
Uh, she never sits still, she always moves one space. So we take this one, we put it underneath the deck, so you'll see that it goes underneath the countdown card. So they always stay in order. And she's moving to a pub area. So that means that from here and here, she could be moving, say, from here to here. She could be moving from here to here. She could have moved from here to here. So that one would represent both of those. This one cannot move to a pub area. We're going along these routes here. So there's no possible tavern area. Her connected are Clerkenwell, St. Paul's, Black, uh, she was at Blackfriars, so Liberty of the Clink. So she's in one of these two spots. So we have two things we want to start doing. First thing, we want to start working on visiting all of the areas on the board so we can reveal that card pretty much as soon as possible and also track her down because we have to track her down in order to get a clue card. So let's just move on our turn. We either stay where we are. We can use a fog card if there's one on top of the deck or we can guess if we're in a place where the dark lady is. So pretty much she has to move into us or we can move one spot. So let's move to Cripplegate. We started at Clerkenwell, so let's go ahead and grab that one. And now we're at Cripplegate, so let's take that one and we are down two places we visited. And then we move on to the next turn. So she's roaming about town. She's going to a commercial area. So again, that really doesn't change much. She can move there and there. Hmm. So she could easily come to me if I just stay there. I'll tell you what, let's move to St. Paul's. That'll get us a new card and she still could potentially come to where we are. So St. Paul's is now in our pile. And she's going to move again. Oh, she's going to another tavern. So there or there. All right, let's move to Cornhill and go ahead and grab that card. Keep on going, whoops. And she's moving to a boat area, so there or there. Huh, I think I'm going to go to Bishopgate and go ahead and grab that card. So the first part of this game, at least the way I play it, is typically I'm moving around. I'm just watching her movement, trying to narrow it down. Uh, I haven't been able to narrow it down quite so well yet, so I just let her move a little bit and try to stay in a general area. So the next card is, and the book actually suggests holding these the whole time. So she's going to a pub area. So Man, she's just back and forth. Unless I've missed something, she's just back and forth here. Um, let's go ahead and get Shorteth out of the way. That's the hardest one. That and uh, Clerkenwell are the hardest ones to kind of reach because there's not uh, a lot of action going on to those. She goes, she seems to go to those two places the least. All right, so next card is the House of Shakespeare, Shakespeare's Residence. So that means that she could go there, she could go here, and that's it. She couldn't have reached this one from there. So she's still in possibly two places. Hmm. So let's move. Where have we not been? We, let's move down to Bishopgate. Next one is going to... Okay. So she's moving to a riverside area. And there's not one connected to here. So she is not there. Uh, she would have to move two to get to another riverside. So that means, and she has to move, so that means she is over here in Blackfriars. Hmm. I say let's move down to East Cheap. Go ahead and get that card. And let's see where she goes. So she goes to a rural area that would have to be Clerkenwell. Let's move down to, oh, should I move up? Let's go down to London Bridge. I really like to get these all taken care of really quickly. Moves again. She's going to move to a house or residence area. So that means we're back to two possible places. Let's move to Southwark. She's going to move and she's going 
so she could be moving back here or she could be moving over here to Shortage. So Blackfriars and Liberty of the Clink. So if she's here, going around this way wouldn't be a terrible idea. But if she's there, we would be getting further away. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get Liberty. And now we have one left. So we have another residence. So she could be moving there or there or, oh man, now we're at three locations. Let's move to Blackfriars and we're gonna get our first clue. So what we do is we look over here and we find the suit. So we're looking at the rows. So this is saying that this has one, one of these in common with the other card of the suit. So the rose suit, the red suit has one. So one of the symbols, this is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna try to figure out, not necessarily the name, that's just for flavor, but which three symbols are on that card. And they represent different things that that lady has interest in. So we know that it's one of the symbols on this card is going to be a ring, a crown, or a heart. So we can use these to kind of narrow it down. So there's our first clue. And that card becomes even more important a little later on. Okay, it's her turn to move again. Because I moved, I can't search there. So she's going to move to a church area. So this one has to move. So she cannot be at Bishopgate. And that means she could move from here to St. Paul or from Cripplegate to St. Paul or to Clerkenwell. Hmm. I think I'm going to stay here and see where she moves. This may help me out. Okay, so we have her moving to Shakespeare's residence. That means she could move here, but she could also be moving here. She could be moving here from here. So there's a decent chance between those that she moved here. Well, let's take a guess and see. So the way we take a guess is we find the card for the place we are at. So instead of moving for our action, we're going to uh, try to track her down. So we take this card, and if you notice, it has a hole in it. That's going to become very important. Then we take the top of the fog deck, and we place it over top of this while we pull the other one out so that we can't see the card underneath. That's very important. We don't want to know where she's going before she goes. We keep this one face down, and we take the location card, and we place it just like so, so that when we flip it over, it has something in the keyhole. And right now, there is a silhouette of the Dark Lady. So she is in Blackfriars with us. Now, if I'm just moving this up, if it were empty like that, then we have wasted a guess and we have not tracked her down. And then I love the flavor on this. For how I have sworn thee fair and thought thee bright, who art as black as bell, as dark as night. So these are part of the sonnets that he has, where he talks about the dark lady, the mysterious dark lady that history has lost. All right, so we have found her. That means that fog card stays there and we get a clue. So this one is discarded. Blackfriars goes back to us because we might need to guess that again. And we get the top card of this deck right here. So again, I play with the this little hidden thing so I can't see the next suit. And we have the purple suit. So we look at this, it is not Jacqueline Field. And we look for, again, the rose. This card has one symbol in common with our dark lady. So the quill, the rattle, or the ring. So We've added even more, but we need to find three. It doesn't help us a ton right now. But we have a little more information. What we do now is, so this replaces this card in the deck, and that means that whenever we hit this, uh, we have a hidden movement that we're not going to know about. So what we do is we look at the number of clues. We have two clues, so we skip a block of cards equaling that amount without looking. So we're going to take two cards. I think you can see that's two. We flip that down. So that means she's going to move two spaces and end up somewhere in a commerce district. 
or commercial area. So, uh, looking, she can reach this one in two from there. She cannot reach this one in two. Okay, so we got lucky. A lot of times that means that, let's say it had been a, I don't know, a residence area. That would have been the worst one. I mean, she could have been even at the same place because she could have gone to, say, St. Paul's and back. But we got lucky with that one. We can keep track of her as of right now. So let's chase her down. Let's go to St. Paul's, get the next card. It's a residential card. So she could be going here. She could be going here. I think let's go to Cornhill. That seems like a good place to sit. And she goes to, look at that. That's great. So there or there. So it's going to be here. So we should have a hundred, hopefully, percent chance. I mean, there's always that doubt that I have. So Cornhill. And we're going to guess at that. Now we have to be careful. There are only 12 fog cards. And if we run out, we lose. So if we go through the deck, in this case, three times, because we have the two there, then we lose. If we run out of fog cards, we lose as well. So we're going to put that there. We're going to take the top card off. Place Cornhill underneath it, and we should have found her. Him have I lost, thou hast both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet I am not free. So we found her. We're going to draw a card. We have the oak card, the green. I believe that's oak. And we look, and ah, still only one symbol. So this has one symbol in common. So it could be the rattle, it could be the ring. We have both of those in our pool, but this one would add the note. I'm gonna set that aside because I think that is less likely. So what do we need to narrow this down? What we really need are one of these cards that say zero or two up here in the rose section. Because what that means, and this is why the uh, rose card is so important, let's put that one on top, is because let's say this said zero or two in the rows, then that means that the other this rose card would either have zero symbols in common or it would have two matching symbols with that card. And we could deduce that based on the outcome which card that may be and what symbols they may have. So we'll put those there. We'll leave our rose card. Let's leave that right there. So now we have three clues. That means she's going to skip ahead three spaces, uh, of course, to a Shakespeare residential area. So she could go one, two, she could go one, two, three. Really, she could do one, two, three, and one, two, three. She couldn't get to this one, I don't believe. One, two, three, yep, nope, she could. All right. And she could get to this one. So there's that dispersion of she could be pretty much anywhere on the map. So I'm really still missing a vital card. That's okay. We've got time. We've got time. She's going to a pub area. Okay, that's helpful. So the only pub area she can reach is southward. All right. Fantastic. That helped a lot. Uh, so we're going to move to East Cheap. I hope she comes to us. Maybe she's moving to uh, Financial District. We're getting close to this pink bordered card, uh, which is the end of our deck. She's moving back to Southwark, so we're going to move to London Bridge. And then she is moving to a Playhouse area. So Liberty of the Clink. It's a pretty good chance she would go there. Let's go to Southwark in case she comes back. She's moving again, so she is going to Blackfriars. Let's move back to Liberty. And then we have hit the end of the deck. So she doesn't move right this second. Instead, what we do is we take this, we flip it over, and we put this at the bottom with a one. And then she's moving to a boat district, uh, so a riverside area. So she has to move. The only other boat that she can reach is Liberty. So let's pull out Liberty of the Clank and let's take a guess. 
Let's get us another clue. I, I feel pretty certain about this, but I, I've been wrong before. Come on. All right, put that underneath. And we have her. Only my plague thus far I count my gain, that she that makes me sin awards me pain. Uh, such good quotes. Bring, brings back a lot of good memories of reading Shakespeare. All right, so we have ourselves another clue. And I'm hoping this one does some good things for us. So let's draw the next clue card. And it is kind of the till card. And here we go. We have a zero or two. So let's pull this one over. So it says that the rose card is either going to have zero in common or two in common. When we look, there are zero in common. So that means the dark lady card has two of these symbols here. All right. So that means if we figure this out a little bit, we have the rattle and we have the link and we have the music note. Well, we know that one of these symbols is, is going to be on this card. What's a shame is that there are no overlapping symbols. That stinks. Usually there are overlapping symbols. So I could say like if this, if this had been a music note here, I could say, oh, you know what? So it's the link and the rattle that are in common and not the music note. So right now, let's see. So if it's the rattle, this has one, so that means it can't be the music note. Or if it's the music note, it can't be the rattle, based on this. This has one in common, and it either is or is not the rattle. If it's not the rattle, then it's probably the ring, because there's one in common here, and the ring is the most likely, I think. So I'm feeling pretty good about the rattle, to be honest. Of course, if this is the rattle and this is the rattle, all we've done is eliminate the music note. I'm not feeling very good about the chain. Well, no, if, if it is the rattle, then we also eliminate the ring. <laughs> Okay, I feel like I need one more card to really nail this down. So right now, if I'm looking correctly, I'm feeling pretty good about the music note. I'm definitely feeling good about the rattle. I'm actually almost ready to lock the rattle in. The ring, eh, I'm on the cusp of. I'm not feeling great about the chain. Let's put that over there. But then that still leaves, well again, if this is the rattle, Whatever this one is, is not the other two. So we may be able to eliminate the inkwell. Just not as much overlap as I would like. Okay, so we have four clues. Let's keep going. One, two, three, four. Go to the bottom. And she has moved to a riverside area. And it could be any one of those. Now I could search because I am here. But do I want to waste a search card? I think I'm going to move to Southwark and try to let her come to me. Let's see. All right, so we have a tavern area. She could be going to East Cheap, but that definitely, definitely eliminates that one. Now I feel a little better. I mean, I've got a 50-50 chance. So let's search and see if we've got it. Sometimes you have to take a chance just to, just to, Get ahead of her. So Southwark, put her there, and oh, we do have her. So she is not at East Cheap. I hate from hate away she threw and saved my life, saying, not you. All right, fantastic. So we're going to get another clue. We have the other blue card. So this one is zero or two as well. Oh, fantastic. So where is my other rose card? So we should have two in common with this one. All right, so we should be able to figure this out now. I'll give time if you want to pause the video and figure this out. I'll leave those right like so before we go ahead and watch me probably guess wrong.
Okay, I'm going to go through this kind of step by step of what I think. So this one says zero or two is in common. So obviously zero in common with the, or two in common, sorry, two in common with this one. So that means this is a heart and the ring. So it has those two in common with that. Okay. Then we go to the other zero and two and it says that there are none in common with this one. So that means there are zero in common with this one. So it cannot be an inkwell. It cannot be the heart. It cannot be the ring. So we can put those out and say, nope, that's not going to happen. So zero or two, there are zero here in common. So we have the link as a possibility, the rattle as a possibility, and the music note as a possibility. All right. This one has one potential possibility. So that means that it has to be the crown because it's not the heart, it's not the ring. So we have one of the three through that. So if it's not the ring and if it's not the inkwell, it is definitely the rattle. And then this one, we've already got the rattle, so it could be that one. We know it's not the ring, but it could be the music note. So I'm leaning heavily on the music note here. I'm trying to see, I mean, that could be the one here, right? No, because if it's the rattle, which we know, it can't be the music note. So it has to be the link. So that means the two here are going to be the rattle and the link. The one here is going to be the crown. This one has zero. The one here would be the rattle, it has to be the rattle. So it's not the music note, it's not the ring. So we can get that out of there. So it has to be, and this one is the rattle because we've eliminated the ring and the thing. So that means it has to be the link. I think we have her personality figured out. But that's not the end of the game, and I could be wrong. So we have five clues. She's skipping ahead five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me just double count those. One, two, three, four, five. So really, she could be anywhere, but she is at a rural area. So there or there. So three ways to lose the game. If these cards run out, if you get to zero on the countdown card at the bottom or somewhere in the middle now, or if we guess wrong. Okay, so let's move to London Bridge. We're gonna just be moving, dancing around a little bit. So she's moving to a residential area. So that could be here, that could be here. Hmm, do I think she might come around here or here? Actually, she could be here as well. Let's move to East Cheap, that's a little more. I have a couple of uh, extra guesses. She's moving to a church, so that would mean here or here. Uh, no church. Uh, she would have to move, so she's not there. Let's move to Cornhill. All right, so we have a fog card. So we have an option here. Uh, we could just move or stay where we are. She does move. Um, but, of course, if we move to where she is now, she's not technically there, so we couldn't guess anyway, but... That would be our, our thing. But we could use a fog card. Now, some of these fog cards are good for us. Some of them are bad. Let's do that just for the sake of demonstration. So you take a new fog card, and just like you would a regular fog card, you replace it. Uh, you, you take the bottom one out, and then we look, and it says, ooh, reveal a new clue card. Okay, that doesn't help us too much, but it may just solidify our choosing. So it is not uh, Marie Mountjoy. This has one in common. Well, we know it's not a heart. We know it's not an inkwell. So that just definitely verifies that it is the link. So I, I feel 99 point something percent. I can't feel 99.9 .9 because I've guessed wrong. 
<laughs> wrong before. My powers of deduction are not great sometimes. Okay, so we go to the next card. Because we did not take a guess, we only do one. So she's moving to uh, a church, but remember she's moved two. She moved last time, and now she's moving to a church. So a church that's two away, that could be this one. That could be this one. And she was here, so that could be this one as well. Mm. That's not helpful. Let's stay where we are. Okay, good call. She's moving to a commerce, so that would be there, there. She can't reach one from there. So I feel pretty good about Cornhill. So pull that out, place it with a fog card, because if we're wrong, if we're wrong, then we still use up a fog card. Put this underneath, and we have her. Him have I lost, thou hast both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet I am not free. I think we've read that one before, but gosh, these quotes are so good. She tries, try, historians trying to track down Shakespeare's Dark Lady. Okay, it's time for the reveal. So we want all three of these symbols to match this, and we'll find out who she is. We have a crown, a link, and a rattle. Fantastic. Mary Fritton, you are the dark lady in this game. And that's how you play. It's really simple. Uh, it, it can be a lot harder. That actually was pretty easy. We got pretty lucky with our draws um, and tracking her down. But there there are many times where I, I've gone through the deck too much. Usually I run out because I run out of fog cards trying to track her down. Not, not usually the guessing. Uh, usually I only need four to five cards to figure out who she is. Uh, but it's usually I come down to my last one and there are some times where I just have to, I'll have her say here and here, and I'm getting low on the deck, and I have to just take a guess. I have to just take a chance. And that's always exciting and exhilarating, um, especially when you are like, oh, I have the right person, according, or the right personality. I just can't catch her. She slipped away. And that was Black Sonata. This is just a fun little game. Sometimes it can be hard. Sometimes I think that was the easiest it's ever been for me. Uh, just things came out and uh, we, we got lucky with, with the movement, really. I think it just came down to uh, the movement. We got lucky with that. It didn't get too hard. But there are a ton of cool things that I like about this game. Uh, in fact, I'm getting ready to travel and I'm going on a kayaking trip, staying in a cabin in the mountains. This is going to travel with me. It's a compact little game. And one reason is because I have the expansion and haven't played it yet. Maybe we'll do that. If you want to see the expansion and see what this holds, then hit that like button so that I know that's something you're interested in. Uh, but my daughter also likes to, to chase the, the dark lady around the board and try to figure out where she is and capture her. And this is just a fun game. This system right here with the, the lettered cards is really smart. Uh, and it has, if you flip them over, these four are more difficult. In fact, there are several difficulty levels uh, that you can tailor to. Um, and there's a scoring. I don't usually ever do the scoring, but um, there are more patterns back here that are not alphabetized, uh, but you can put these in this order and it's even harder. And I've heard that this ups the difficulty just a tad too, uh, but also uh, ups the engagement with more to do on your turn. But just the base game is, is really fun. Um, it's well produced. I mean, everything is, is just really nice. The map, I love that they have just the map on the back. It is gorgeous. Well done. And the system with looking at the magnifying glass in the, uh, in the placement cards, those, everything is just well thought out here and well produced. And it's just a fun, short little game. I don't do a lot of small games and uh, short playtime games. This is one I'll do a couple times. I'll, I'll pull it out and I want to play it. It's unique in my collection. So I, I'm excited to do that. I would love to uh, explore this in the coming weeks and then maybe do a video. Again, if you are interested in seeing what this has to offer, then definitely hit that thumbs up button. Share this video so that other people may discover this game and see if it's right for them. We are racing to a thousand subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing so. We have a special playthrough planned, a game that has been requested since I started this channel. 
when we hit a thousand plus some other videos that have been requested i think will also be put up to celebrate when we do that milestone i'm so thankful for everybody that has supported this channel and the community that has been built around it i hope you enjoyed this video why not check out some of the other videos that we have on the channel but until next time thanks for watching and happy gaming